God is good. We serve an awesome God. Hey, look at that. But t today, around our nation, uh, people will be gathering to pray. Each one in their own own ways. Uh, but tonight on our website. Yay! <laughs> it worked. On our National Day of Prayer website, ndposceola.com. That's N for like National D for Day and P for Prayer. ndposceola.com. Uh, we actually have the prayer points. Uh, there is going to be uh, a link there for the observance the National Observance of National Day of Prayer at 8 o'clock tonight from 8 to 10. Uh, there's also one that Greg Lowry is hosting at 7 o'clock. So, but all that information is right there on our website as well as the the prayer points. So, and there's a lot of other information. There's things from last year and uh, previous, previous years. So, I do welcome you to, to go to the website like it become a part of Osceola National Day of Prayer but the website is ndposceola.com Ready to pray? Yes. <laughs> okay. My seat is crooked. Heavenly Father, Lord, <laughs> we thank I you, thank Lord. you for this day. Yes. Lord, you are not the author of confusion so Lord I pray that you help us to stay focused Lord today. Yes, Lord. As it is a day of prayer I pray God that you would help us just to be mindful of you throughout the day as we reach and touch into lord the lives of everyone god we ask that you would just help our nation lord our nation is in need of you god those that are leading our nation are in need of you those that are protecting our nation are in need of you those that are covering the news of our nation are in need of you Lord our families are in need of you God our businesses are in need of you father I just pray that you just help us to honor you today in Jesus name amen, amen. amen. so good morning Lily good morning Kate good morning Roseanne good morning. Um, I'm gonna try to get through uh, through this efficiently there's seven points for National Day of Prayer and seven points that we're going to cover that things that you need to pray about. Why pray for America? Well, why pray for Nineveh? <laughs> you know, look what happened with Nineveh. Uh, prayer changes things. Amen. Uh, prayer changed things throughout the Old Testament. Prayer changed things through the New Testament. If we didn't pray, just 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 say we didn't we didn't pray. We didn't, we wouldn't have the Lord's Prayer. You wouldn't be forgiven. Uh, God's mercy wouldn't wouldn't be extended often. Uh, we would be subject to way more judgment. We wouldn't have access to God to be able to talk to Him. And uh, a world without prayer is a world that's in trouble. Prayer is important. It is a foundational stone of our Christianity. Amen. Prayer yes. is our communication. No communication in a marriage, the marriage breaks down. No communication in a friendship, the friendship breaks down. No communication between you and your boss would get you fired. Uh, <laughs> see, communication is important. Nobody yes. will doubt that. Well, prayer is communication between you and God. And Amen. when that relationship, Amen. everything vertically is in line where it needs to be, then everything is gonna work out better. Amen. When you lose that connection, there's a problem. So, first off, have Jesus in your heart. I approach God. I ask Him to forgive me the things that, that, that I have done wrong or whatever I've done, that I would just be mindful of Him. I thank Him for His mercy every time. I am so thankful for Amen. God's mercy because He has forgiven us of, of a great deal. But we're going to pray for seven things seven things that we want you to pray for today yes. these are listed on the facebook page they will be listed on the intercession city facebook page they will be listed on the the osceola ndp facebook yep. page and they are listed on ndposceola.com yeah ndposceola.com ndp that you can find these listings we want to talk to you really quick about government we need to pray for our government yes. 
We need to pray for our leaders, our judges, our courts. We need to pray basically that God would grant them wisdom. Amen. We need to pray for our federal government. You need to consider praying for our president, Amen. our vice president, our cabinet members, our congressional leaders, Amen. our Supreme Court justices, the Senate, the House, those yeah. people. Yeah. Those people in our federal government, they need prayer. They need to make godly decisions. Yes. Uh, I, I don't care what party they're at or whatever, they need to make godly decisions Amen. and God needs to speak into the hearts. If God can speak into the hearts of, of kings in the Old Testament, he can speak into the hearts of our leaders. Amen. We need to pray for state government. We need to pray for our governor. We need to pray for, pray for our executive leaders, our legislative leaders, our judicial leaders, Amen. our local courthouses. Those are the people that we need to pray for, for our state government, for, for our governor, DeSantis. We need to pray for him. We need to pray for our local government. We need to pray for our mayors. We need to pray for our city council. Yes. We need to pray for our police chief. We need to pray for our sheriff. Uh, sheriff. We need to pray for our fire chief, our county officials, our judges, our judges. We need to pray for these people that God would speak into their life. If that's not a mouthful of stuff that you need to pray for, <laughs> that right there, you need to pray. I, I don't. I, I always hear people sometimes complaining, and my question to you is: Do you spend as much time praying for Trump as you do complaining about Trump? I said that for eight years about Obama, so it's nothing new. It's not like I'm just talking about. We are, uh, we are encouraged in Scripture to pray for our leaders that we Amen. might live our life peaceably. Amen. Amen. Complaining is not prayer. Complaining <laughs> does not help things. But pray for him. Pray, and I'm not saying pray that he he do what you want. You should pray for our leaders that they do what God, God wants. wants them to do. We need to Amen. pray for number two, our military. God has appointed our military officers. God puts people in authority. And we yeah. need to encourage them to be strong Amen. and courageous and not to be afraid. Amen. For the Lord, our God, is with them wherever they go. We need to pray for our military. Yes. These people have put and are putting their lives on the line for our freedoms. Yep. Our freedoms Amen. on there. We we could have lost wars. We could have been That's taken over by foreign countries. You need to pray for the military. We need to pray and encourage them. They need courage. They need perseverance. They need divine protection. They need wise leaders. Oh, I cannot ex express our military people need wise leaders mm -hmm. because who wants to be in the military under an idiot <laughs> you need wisdom as our military we need to pray for protection but we also need to pray for support for them that's military we, uh, also the chaplains the chaplains pray for the Christian chaplains because a lot of what's happening is people in the military soldiers and stuff like that are turning around and wanting to sue the chaplains for using the word of God. That's ridiculous. Isn't that crazy? Um, Christian chaplains is what it all started with. Chaplain. So, a chaplain was a, 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 a Christian minister and there are people in our government, the uh, separation of church and state people, the uh, no religion people, and they want chaplains just to be positive speakers. Yeah, but You know, if they have to be able to use the scriptures. Yeah. There is, as a pastor, if you take the scriptures, the word of God away from us, if you take the name of Jesus away from us, then we've got nothing to say. Man. Because the only words that we should be speaking is the words of God. Man. That's what the Bible is. That was the foundation of this nation. Mm -hmm. So pray that all that be corrected um, because a lot of that was taken away from our chaplains in the previous administration. So we need to pray that once again they be able to freely minister yeah. the gospel, the good Amen. news. That's the only thing that's going to bring peace. Amen. So We need to pray for media. Number three, media, the news media, social media. We need to pray for media. There is 
so many false news stories out there. So many things that are sensationalism. The, the, the stories that are going out there that you see are crazy. Now the latest thing is murder hornets. L let me tell you that I put a link on my personal page for Coyote Peterson who has actually been stung by a murder hornet and he did it on purpose uh, to see how bad it is. He declared that the murder hornet, which is not even a real name, it was just made up by the media to, to promote fear. He said it's the number two worst thing he ever had in yeah, his number life. Number two, not the first. Oh, not the first. The first was the assassin hornet. Um, he said they found one carcass of a giant Japanese hornet in somewhere up in the Pacific Northwest, dead. No nest. Not alive. No nest, no nothing. But the news is carrying this big thing. You, yeah. you, you need to just turn off the news and turn on the, the word. word. God. Amen. We need to pray for our media because whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are a good report, good report. Think Amen. on these things. Leave the fiction for Star Trek and Star Wars <laughs> and, and all those shows, yep. but leave the facts for the facts. Because even places that do fact checking for you are <laughs> probably biased to begin with and they promote well this is the truth because we said it's the truth no for me it's the truth because the word of god says the truth we need more sharing of the word of god with people there's a lot more people that are tuning in now than we have ever had in our church yep. many people now who are online have not been to our church we are reaching more people through media than we have in the two and a half years that we have been at the church. Yep. More people are stepping through our virtual doors than ever before. Yeah. And this is not just unique to us. This is happening to all the churches that are doing live yes. streams. People are attending. So when we open up, let me encourage you to come give us a visit. Yeah. Bring coffee, bring your donuts, just yeah. put your clothes on, don't come in your pajamas. <laughs> so. Here's the next point. Number four, business. Now, if you don't see a need for praying for our businesses in America right now, you have had your head stuck in a hole in the ground somewhere. Uh, there are so many people out of jobs right now. There are so many businesses that are being crippled. There are businesses that are just plain not going to open. They're going to file for bankruptcy. There are landlords who own the property that the business is in who are going to be stuck with not being able to pay their mortgage because the business is filed for bankruptcy. We need to pray for our businesses. We pray that God would prosper businesses. Particularly, I'm praying for Christian businesses, mm -hmm. that God would prosper them. That there would be integrity. Yes. Uh, go ahead and let the smut and garbage businesses go, go on out. But we need to pray. Pray for local businesses. Yeah. You know, you want to go eat at McDonald's, find that mom and pop restaurant and get your hamburger over there. We had a hamburger from Mutt's on 13th down in St. Cloud. <laughs> it was a good hamburger. It was reasonably priced. Uh, on a comparison to, say, a McDonald's hamburger, which would yeah. be... I don't know, but those are probably a three. Or two. Yeah, a three. This, this, was, this was a seven, maybe an eight. Yeah. It was a good hamburger. This is how you can help not only pray for businesses but you can help support local yeah. businesses we need to pray for our businesses that god would take care of them number five education we need to pray for education you think about our schools in this day and age right now they're closed yeah. the bible's back in a lot of schools the bible yeah. is, is as these students are at home learning a lot of parents are putting the Bible back in there. I cannot tell you how many posts I have seen from parents trying to figure out this common core <laughs> junk that, that they don't understand. Now, my brain would probably grasp a hold of that because I still sometimes count on my <laughs> fingers. Uh, I still do, do my nines tables with my, my fingers to figure that out. But it, it, it's just so many extra steps and that can be really, really confusing. Uh, we need to pray for education because God needs to be back in our yeah, schools. Our teachers and stuff like that. There's so many decisions um, 
that school boards are going to have to make of how to handle this whole yes. situation when the kids go back to school. Yeah. The graduations, so many kids look forward to graduations. Um, how to maybe be able to give them graduations this summer instead. Yes. Um, but the teachers to be encouraged. Um, and like Matthew was saying, as far as Christian teachers, that they be able to more freely give the gospel and bring that peace if a student because when these kids go back to school these kids a lot of them are going to need peace um, and a Christian teacher should have the freedom to be able to do that they should be able to have the freedom to pray for a student if that's what's needed um, give a hug I when I used to teach I used to say you know to me a teacher was a second mom because we spent you know the eight hours a day with these kids I mean, if you talk about the wake hours, we actually were spending more time with the students than their parents were. Because, you know, you want to have three, four hours in the evening when the kids get home before they have to go to bed. So, teachers play, play a very important role in the lives of Amen. students. Amen. We want godly teachers, teachers that will teach our kids properly, that will say the right things and bring peace into those classrooms be able to know how to teach each different style that's there. You can't teach each student the exact same way. No. You know, uh, I learn a, I learn a whole lot different than what Randy learned. Yes. Amen. So, right. very pray, important. pray for our education. Number 6, pray for church. Churches need you. Amen. Churches need your prayers. L let me tell you some people are declaring, "Ah, oh, we see we can live without church." They don't know what's going on right now through our media. They, they think that the churches are shut down. They have no idea that more people are getting church right now than, than having a very long time. <laughs> so they need your churches. The only thing, we may have interaction, but the, the money's not coming in as far as people giving their offerings. So you need to pray that churches can meet their needs. I know church pastors who have not gotten a paycheck during this time. Yeah. I know church pastors who have not even gotten a stimulus check yeah. during this time. Granted, well, the church is closed, so it's not running the AC and the air conditioning and its bills. There's still mortgages insurance. Are still paid, There's still mortgages. Insurance. And this, some of these big churches that are dependent upon big congregations to pay their big bills, they're hurting. Yeah, it's schools, they're, churches they're that hurting. have schools, schools, and the schools are schools, out, so they're not paying. Schools and churches, and now the schools are out, so the church doesn't have a school in there, and the schools are saying, we're not paying for, for yeah. to use your facility because, because we're not there. And I understand the logic behind that, but we need to pray for our churches. We yeah. need to pray for our churches to get back to the truth of God's Word. Yep. There are too many churches and too many pastors that are pandering to people that are demanding that the scriptures be cast aside and they want every church to embrace every philosophy, every viewpoint, every religion, and every broad highway that leads to hell. And they don't want you to, to warn people about God's judgment on people who live in sin. This is a way that it's, it's put on these prayer points. It says, the prayer points for the church because you see how the church goes is how the community is going to go Amen. Um, we really are the thermostat for our communities because only god can change the hearts and only a changed heart can change the way they act um, you're not going to be able to solve drug problems you're not going to be able to solve uh, the marriage problems and all Food these pantries run by all churches. these things without a changed heart and only God can change a heart so these are some of the prayer points for the churches it says that the church would find a new zeal and commitment to the mission and purpose of Jesus Christ unity with with and among churches that reveal God's love to the world a return to absolutes of God's Word integrity that God's people look and act differently from the world. A holy fear of the Lord released in the heart of God's people. Amen. These are points for the church. Finally, last is family. Yes. Family, because we're keeping, we, 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 we're, we're, <laughs> we're, yeah. 
Um, family, a house divided against itself can not stand. We need to pray that there be unity in our homes. Unity and love in individual family units that reach out in hospitality toward others. Help your neighbors. The re-establishment of relationships between parents and children. Amen. Oh, that's a good one. Amen. A return to family values that serve the nation as a whole. Amen. A return to biblical mandate to train their children at home in the fear of the Lord and not to leave the responsibility up to schools and friends. Amen. These are seven points that we're going to be praying about. Again, these seven points that we have here, you can find them on our website. You can find them on ndposceola.com. Yeah, NDP Osceola. Osceola NDP's Facebook page, Intercession City's Facebook page, Intercession City Church of God, or Intercession City C O G. Um, Dot com, you can find these points to pray. I just thank you guys for joining us. Thank Let's you so much. Let's close in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, yes. we praise you and we thank you for today. Lord, as we say that this nation is one nation under God, Lord, united as your children pray today. I ask, Lord, that you hear our cries. For I thank you for those and the prayer lines that are going around 24 hours a day, seven days a week, Lord. Bless those that have been on the wall, Lord, and continue to be on the wall. Lord, we thank you. May we let your joy and your peace rule in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Be blessed. Uh, those that are going to tune on, we'll see you throughout the day. Uh, at different times i don't know what this is going to look like today i have no idea i'm just trusting the lord i know that at 9 25 um, i will be meeting with the state coordinator of national day of prayer and we will be having prayer together amen um, and from then we'll see how the lord how the lord leads it all amen. but those that are going to go out to different places to pray i thank you those that are praying at home i thank you um, we need to lift up our nation lift up our president in a very special way so many blessings, as we usually say. Rejoice in the Lord always. Love you, Kate. And again, I say rejoice. Love you, Kate. God bless you guys. Keep a praise song in your heart. Thank you.